It is orange and blue today. Part do? I don't know, Mace. What should we call the second show? If you're going to say, like, in French, it's a duh. Duh. Part duh. Part duh. Okay. Yeah. Well, Lammy is or French. Dos, right? If we go with uh, my mother's maiden name and my Hispanic heritage. Either way, we've got to figure out this quarterback situation. If you had a choice between Jarrett Siddham and J.J. McCarthy, Mace, what would your choice be? For 2024 or for beyond? 2024. Okay. 2024, you're probably starting Jarrett Stidham because J.J. McCarthy probably requires a longer gestation to be ready. The question is, is is Jarrett Stidham enough of a quality bridge to where you could buy a year with him or maybe even two years while J.J. McCarthy got ready? He may need the Jordan Love plan. Maybe not three years like Jordan Love, but he may be a two-year development before he's ready compared to some of these other quarterbacks coming out. Well, and if the question is, is Jarrett Stidham that guy that you could rely on as a bridge, my answer is no. Not at all. And I think we got those clues over the last two weeks. I, I think that was his audition for a larger role with this team, Mace. And I don't believe he passed that audition. Yeah, it was. He looked like a perfectly functional backup or to use the Simpsons parlance, perfectly cromulent backup, which is fine. But if he is your veteran bridge in there, that means the clamor is probably going to rise fairly quickly because it's hard to see a scenario where with Jarrett Stidham, this team is consistently competitive. I mean, results are what they are. 30 points, you know, there was it 30 points for the offense over two games, 15 a game, one touchdown against the Chargers, two touchdowns against the Raiders, one of which came when you were down three scores in the fourth quarter. They call that garbage time. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I was trying to be kind because there was still a faint hope of a comeback. Right. It was like true garbage time is like 34 seven with like seven minutes to go. And you've got no hope. Yeah. But that was the thing. Like mm -hmm. there were chances and that's where the growth and development. We've got a clip mm -hmm. of Siddham talking about his growth this year. Mm -hmm. Mace, this is where I've been most disappointed in Jared Siddham because you had this entire year. You probably had in mind when Sean Payton picks you up, pays you well, pays right. a good price for Jared Stidham. When Sean Payton picks you up and basically, you know, maybe had told you behind the scenes, just be ready, you know, mm -hmm. be ready. And as a backup, you should be ready to go out there and perform like that in that opportunity. I was disappointed because we should have seen better growth. Yeah, I mean, shoot. If you're looking at like at um, value, contractually speaking, Baker Mayfield the Bucks got him effectively on a one-year, $4 million contract, right? Right. And Mayfield's playing really well. He has them in the divisional round. They won a very weak division, but they still won a division, and they won a playoff game. Jarrett Stidham, his average annual value is $5 million a year. So Jarrett Stidham, on a per-year basis, Baker Mayfield, one year, $4 million. Jarrett Stidham, two years, $10 million. Um... Not the best deal. No. In retrospect. No, not the best deal. And that's why, like, we, we talked to Jarrett Stidham after the season was done and they're cleaning out their lockers. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage because Stidham talked about his growth this past season. Yeah, I felt like I definitely grew, um, you know, in those two weeks. Uh, it's it's one thing to, to practice certain things, but once you're out there playing and, um, you know, making calls at the line and, and, and doing certain things, um, and getting a feel for it, you know, in live action. Um, felt like I definitely grew um, and, and looking forward to, uh, you know, the spring. So let's play off that, Mace. Mm -hmm. Is it just the fact that he needs to be more of a gamer? I, I don't like that term personally, mm -hmm. yeah. but he just said it. You know, hey, you know, real reps and game time, live reps. Like, okay, maybe in practice it looks one way, but when he was in the game, he wasn't a gamer. Well, yeah, wouldn't it have manifested a little bit better than we saw? Especially that Chargers game. I mean, that Chargers defense you know, a couple weeks earlier had given up, what, 63 to the Raiders? 16. That's bad, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, you were down Cortland Sutton, although it didn't really look much better with Cortland Sutton out there in week 18 against the Raiders. Yeah, it basically what Jarrett Stidham looked like and what the offense looked like, it 
he could hit the he could hit the marks that Sean Payton wanted him to hit. He wasn't accurate. Like th there were some missed throws. And you and I talked about this when the Broncos signed Jared Stidham back in the spring. The one thing that jumped out from the film of him with the Raiders when he made those two starts back in the 2022 season at the end of it was the pocket presence, the feel for the pass rush wasn't great. That was something that did manifest when he was with the Patriots as well when he played briefly and even going back to when he was at Auburn. So it's fair to say, okay, that quarterback that we saw, that's probably who he, he is. Is that enough going into the 2024 season? No, it really isn't. No. And, and unless you have a rookie that you're willing to hand the keys to fairly quickly, right? But you want to have that luxury of saying, okay, if the rookie isn't ready, assuming you draft a quarterback, if the development is slow, that you can go in another direction. And so that's why I'd be surprised if there isn't a veteran coming into that room in the spring that probably ends up being your likely week one starter no matter what you do in the draft right and you mentioned baker mayfield earlier and the problem is now with baker's play he's going to be well paid highly paid mm -hmm. pretty soon probably by tampa but that sort you're looking of for list, the next baker mayfield you're looking, looking for that for, guy yes. and who could that be um and who fits with sean payton because you know a guy that i wouldn't mind seeing who i don't think fits sean payton though is a guy like tyler huntley Mm -hmm. You know, going to be an unrestricted free agent. There's an opportunity there for him to prove that he can be a starter. There are guys like that, but I think it's more of a veteran guy instead of an unproven guy where that's where Jameis comes in. Jimmy Garoppolo has been a name that's thrown around too. Jacoby Brissett's a name that I think is I would love to see Jacoby keeping Brissett. an eye on. Uh, unfortunately, he was knocked out the last game. He was supposed to start. He filled in for Sam Howell twice at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Looked better than Sam Howell. Yeah. And then he was supposed to start that finale and he had a hamstring injury. So a guy like Brissett, uh, would make more sense to me. And that's why Jarrett Stidham's performance, Mace, we said it on the show. Now you got to get two quarterbacks, not one. Mm -hmm. Because here's the other thing. If your quarterbacks, respectfully, if your quarterbacks going into the season are Jacoby Brissett, Jarrett Stidham, Ben DiNucci, and a mid to late round rookie, uh, that's not really going to, um, it's not really going to excite Broncos country very much, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, um, I don't know if that's going that's going to uh, move the needle, sell a lot of club seats and all that, get people excited, get people out to training camp. Right. You're gonna need, as Vic Fangio said, you need some oomph, need some sizzle. So, uh, but any look, if you draft a quarterback in the first round, even if they're behind Stidham and veteran to be named later, that's sizzle, that's oomph, that's hope. Right. Right. So yeah, if. You know, if you're if we're sitting here in early May and we're talking about a quarterback room of Jarrett Stidham, one of Winston, Garoppolo, Brissett, a quarterback like that, and whoever the Broncos decide, and who specifically whoever Sean Payton decides is the right quarterback, I think everyone can get on board with that. Could that right quarterback be JJ McCarthy? Now, I don't know about you. I actually love pro comparisons. It's something that uh, former players are usually very uncomfortable with, mm -hmm. just the guys that I've been around, Mace. But I like looking at a prospect saying there are shades of this guy to his game. Uh, for example, with Michael Penix Jr., I've said there's shades of C.J. Stroud to his game because he makes full field reads, one of our favorites here on this show. But when it comes to J.J. McCarthy, a guy that needs time, a guy that I personally do not have a first round grade on, Mace. I don't think you do either. Mm -hmm. This is where the comparisons can be a little bit interesting, especially when we compare them to who fits with Sean Payton. Right. Um, and just because I don't have a first round grade on a quarterback doesn't mean I don't think they're going to go in the first round or that yes. I wouldn't take them in the first round. Yes. The quarterback premium comes into play here, right? You know, you could have a first round grade on a guard and they end up going late in round two just because they're not, that's not a premium spot and that type of quality player is going to slip, right? It's, you know, positional value in the draft. You're picking premium positions earlier. So, a court, you know, a QB, like QB5, QB6, JJ McCarthy, if he played another position, late second round, early third round guy, right? Sure. Quarterback, 
you're talking about probably having to get have, get him at some point in round one, even though the first year might be a complete wash because he's he's pretty far from ready for the NFL right now. Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr. are much closer to being pro ready than J.J. McCarthy. Right, and with McCarthy, you just have to look at the situation and say, do you have a year or two? Because mm-hmm. that might be what it takes to get him truly pro ready and get mm-hmm. him up to speed as a starter in the National Football League. And that's okay if you have the luxury of taking your time. You never want to mm-hmm. rush a guy. Yeah. That's when teams get in trouble when they rush someone out there before they're ready and it can cause disaster. The secret of the NFL is it's all about fit. Mm-hmm. And if you don't have the right fit and you try to rush a guy, it's just doing everybody wrong. And this isn't to say some quarterbacks aren't ready. CJ Stroud, ready. ready. Joe Burrow a few years ago. Ready. Ready, right? I mean, it does happen. Some are ready to go day one. Others require part of a season. Others require multiple seasons. I mean, uh, you you look at uh, Baker Mayfield, and obviously it didn't work out in Cleveland, even though he did guide them to a playoff win. They did have a really good season with him at quarterback in 2020, and he did play well in 2018. Cleveland gave Baker Mayfield, what, like three or four games? And then he came out and he played well, right? Right nearly got them to a winning season one year after Owen 16. So Baker Mayfield was ready a few games in. He probably would have been ready week one. Yeah. Josh Allen, maybe he came in a little bit too soon as a rookie back in 2018 with Buffalo. But a reason why they had to put him in, and fortunately it didn't hurt his development, but they had to put him in because the bridge was Nathan Peterman. Respectfully, (laughs) Nathan Peterman at the NFL level is not a very good quarterback, which is being kind. Yes. He is, honestly, it's like, how does he keep getting NFL work? I ask myself that all the time. Right. And right. how do evaluators love him? I know some behind-the-scenes stuff about Peterman. Like, they they love him. Coaches love him. They love him. I know Gruden loved him. Absolutely loved him. And, well, the Bills did for a while until they went to Josh Allen. You know who else was ready week one? This is an interesting uh, transition also yeah. to the McCarthy reference. Russell Wilson. Because, yes. remember, they got Matt Flynn. Was it one game, right, against the Lions? He threw, like, seven touchdowns or whatever. It's not even hyperbole. Like, Matt Flynn's finale for Green Mm -hmm. Bay was, like, seven touchdowns, and and then he gets the opportunity. And didn't he come in against the Patriots and make a good acquittal of himself off the bench for Aaron Rodgers? Like, there were, there were, it was a couple of games, I thought, right, with Matt Flynn, and he got paid. You know, part of it was Green Bay. It was the went all the way back to Ron Wolf, the history of developing quarterbacks yes. behind whoever the starter was. First, Brett Favre, then Aaron Rodgers. Like, okay, well, he's the next guy. So Seattle signs him to, to start, and then they draft Russell Wilson in round three, and it's obvious in the preseason that Russell Wilson was a better quarterback. Of course, that being said, Russell Wilson, four-year starter, had been, especially his senior year when he transferred to Wisconsin, working in a pro-style offense. Right. He came to the NFL at a higher level that made him more ready to go. Whereas you think about like that, the day two of that draft or the uh, the second third round of that of that 2012 draft, you had Brock Osweiler going to the Broncos ahead of Russell Wilson. Brock Osweiler out of Arizona State, turning pro probably at least a year early because of a coaching change. Right, right. Didn't want to go through it. Just wanted to cast his lot in the NFL. Osweiler took three years to be ready to step in. Russell Wilson was ready to go day one. No, it's very interesting. Yes, very still interesting. Still an interesting what if to think if the Broncos had taken Wilson instead of Osweiler. And had they kept Tebow and not been able to get Peyton Manning, I believe they would have. We did a what if show on that. Make sure to yeah. check our YouTube channel for that and like, second comment, time share, Tebow's, subscribe. Second time Tebow's come up this week. <laughs> uh, He's about to come up again. Uh, Because we're going to talk about the pro comparison for one J.J. McCarthy. If there is a more mercurial name for Broncos country, Mace, for quarterback, I don't know what it is. And listen, I've often said, whoever Sean Payton's guy is, that's Mm -hmm. the guy. Let's go Broncos. But it's also like, I really don't want McCarthy because of the fact that he will take two years, in my opinion, before he's ready. And fans, Mm -hmm. you bring up McCarthy. Yeah. Fans absolutely despise it. Exactly. A lot of them. Taking the temperature of the fan base on social media right now, J.J. McCarthy, not the favorite. (laughs) Far more positive vibes about Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix when you're getting to that second tier beyond May Williams-Daniels at the top. Right. Right. Um, 
And with Penix, a lot of the critiques are A, injuries, B, oh, well, look at him in the national championship game when they put pressure on him, right? I think there's probably there's probably an overreaction to one game for Michael Penix Jr. Yes, yes. But that's just that's how these things operate anyway. So JJ McCarthy right now, even though he's got the national championship ring and all that, um it's he yields some questions and not just among the fan base, but among uh, some of the experts like Joel Klatt, Fox sports, uh, college football analyst also worth noting, Joel Klatt did have a cup of coffee with the saints with Sean Payton. He's got a bit of an idea of how Sean Payton runs things and what he wants from his quarterbacks. And as Joel Klatt noted uh, on one Oh four, three, the fan this week, um, J.J. McCarthy, not the best fit for a Sean Payne offense. Of the of the quarterbacks available, he's not the one that I would I would mark as the fit. That's not that J.J. is 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 not a good player because he is. He's he's an excellent player. I think J.J. would would fit really well with. I heard you just talking about like Ryan Tannehill at Tennessee with Derrick Henry. You know, like J.J. in a complimentary offense really does a lot of things well. He's better in play action than he is in straight drop back. So ha- having a coach that understands that, having the ability to play with extra gaps in the run game, extra tight ends, and then threatening the, the secondary with tight ends, that's the type of, I think, offense and structure and schematics that I think he would thrive in because that's what he thrived in in college. If you put him into a scenario where he's got five free releases and he's in the shotgun and he's going to be forced to make post-snap downfield reads more than 12, 15 times a game, that's not really what he did in college. Maybe he can develop into that in the National Football League. But to me, Sean's offense is best when he's got a point guard, a real true point guard at the quarterback position, not, not really a complementary piece to the run game and play action. I think, you know, J.J. in some ways is a version, although not totally similar, but a version of Russell Wilson. So I, I don't think that that is – you know, the best marriage or fit that I see in this draft. A version of (laughs) Russell Wilson. Yes. Shades of Russell Wilson to his game, which I would agree with Joel on Mm -hmm. that. And again, Mace, if it's all about fit, we know what that answer is. Yes. That means not on the radar, you'd think. Right. Unless you you believe you can make him into a different type of quarterback or a quarterback who can fit in running the principles of a Sean Payton offense. Payton tried that early in the season with Russell Wilson. Didn't like what he saw. The team was struggling. Then starting with the Chiefs game on Thursday night, they lost that game, but that was when they started to scale things back. Try to avoid giveaways. Set up, set the team up to play some complimentary football. Have a, have a situation where the defense wasn't exposed as much by an offense that was maybe trying to drive down the field quickly and, and get yards and clumps. The equation did work, although it had a big help from the defense becoming a takeaway machine there for five weeks. Mm, it is orange and blue today. Cecil Lammy, Andrew Mason, and we are here for you. And Mace, I cannot wait mm-hmm. until we get on the road for the Shrine game and the Senior Bowl. We're going to have plenty of OBT2, OBT deal. OBT deuce. Dose? I still prefer OBT after dark. OBT after dark. We're going to have plenty of that because you and I aren't really going to get a lot of sleep. Well, that's okay because we're going to mm. see Michael Penix and Bo Nix on the same field together. Yeah. Like we have so much information that we're going to collect for the fans. It'll be right here available for you on YouTube. And brother, you can't see it, but I'm getting chills just talking about hey, it. Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing Sam Hartman and Michael Pratt and seeing the compare and contrast. And if they can't enter the conversation as well. That's part of what that's part of the good thing about the senior bowl is yes. you end up seeing, oh, well, maybe Michael Pratt from Tulane is on the same level as Penix and Knicks. We're, you know, kind of learning about that because he's been in the American Athletic Conference rather than the Pac twelve. But hey, as Gary Kubiak would say, we're fixing to find out. We are fixing to find out. We're fixing a lot here in studio. Yeah. In case you can pick up on that with our hot mics. Anyway, he's Andrew Mason. You follow him on the socials at Mace Denver. I am at Cecil I mean, OBT is a BFD. Many thanks to Joey. Joey's the man back there. He's the man of the box. He's Mace. I'm Cease. Thanks for watching. Do the YouTube things. Like, comment, share, yeah, subscribe. subscribe. 
Hit the, the notification, notification bell, bell so, so that, that you, you never, never miss, miss a vid. vid. That's right. Help us out. Grow our YouTube channel. We appreciate you all. Stay tuned. And would you please, as always, I ask you to do one thing. And that one thing is stay frosty. <laughs>